All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I'm excited you're here. And I'm excited that Tamara Flug is here. Uh, my uh, colleague, another coach. Let me start again. Sorry. I got to start again. Christina loves me when I do this. We're going to go again. Hi, Christina. <laughs> Everybody, welcome back to Monday Morning Mojo. It's Anna Gibbs, and I'm joined by a special guest today, a fellow coach. Her name is Tam Tamara Flug, and she is a fun and confidence coach. And when I learned a little bit about her, I knew she'd be a great person to have on Monday Morning Mojo. So welcome to the show, Tamara. It's good to see you. Thank you so much for having me, Anna. I'm excited to be me here. Me too. So what is a fun and confidence coach? What is it? What's, mm -hmm. What is my job? Yeah, what is so, it that you do? What do you focus on? It's a great question. So actually, I help people feel more confident, trust themselves, trust their intuition, which I think is underrated. We don't trust our intuition enough. We have all the answers inside. And the fun, I added the fun tagline because I believe we take ourselves and our lives very seriously. It's I do true. believe... I do believe it. we are, it is important like to have goals. It's important to live our best life yet, like they like to say. And at the same time, it's not so important. We should not add this pressure, you know, like thinking that we have to, like all yeah. that is so important, you know. Yeah, I love that. And that's one of the reasons why we connected and I wanted to have you on, on the podcast oh. because obviously I spent a lot of time, you know, sharing um, insight with people around goal setting and, and helping people to really think about what they want for their lives. And adding an element of fun is so important, right? Because we have to enjoy what we're doing. And I think that when we discover our purpose um, and we realize that our passion is woven into that, you know, how do we also make sure that we're having a great time and that we're finding joy in what we're doing? So I thought that was, was key. And the other part of what you do that I, I found to be really intriguing is really helping people connect with their own self-awareness and, and building more of their self-belief, right? Their confidence. Um, because I think that can stop us in our tracks often. Don't you agree? Yes, for sure. And I think what you mentioned is so right that just being more aware, like self-awareness is already half of the way, you know, like 50% of uh, improving ourselves or life or make a change. It's just being more aware, but we don't know what we don't know. So the first step is, you know, it's like turning on the light in a dark room. You don't want to see what you're thinking that create, you know, your life. I believe our thoughts create our reality. So, I mean, it's just to be aware. It's just the first step and it goes with not believing everything we think, not believing mm -hmm. our brain. You know? Right. Not believing all the things we tell ourselves, the stories we tell ourselves. So what really inspires you to do this work? Yeah. So I used to be a teacher and I love being with kids. You know, they are so authentic, so simple. They don't really play games. You know, you never see an adult staring at somebody the way they do it. Yes. <laughs> so it was really nice being uh, working with kids. And then I felt like this was a bit the missing piece of uh, our curriculum, you know, the, like the real stuff to be confident, to, you know, have amazing relationships, connect with people, make decisions and have your own back. You know, this kind of thing that I believe really truly makes us happy. So I started learning about life coaching on the side and then I started coaching and I really felt this was the little, again, the piece of the puzzle that as adults, I hope we could bring this into classroom, you know, soon. But yeah. I mean, as adults, I can help now people do. And uh, I'm really glad that this is uh, what I get to do. So I used to be a teacher and I'm Still am because I still have my diploma, <laughs> but now I really love, you know, coaching people and helping them. Uh, most of it is about getting unstuck and you talked about uh, goal setting. So I think we're a bit the same to help people uh, live the life they really want to live. You know, yeah. they have the life they want and the life, the, the life they have, and there is the life that they want to live. So it's that simple, right. I believe, you know. I love, I love the correlation you made with, you know, the fact that you, you taught children, right. And you yeah. see when we were younger, I, I think, you know, many of us had a lot more courage and confidence and somewhere along the way we learned right through our programming, we learned to put these limits on ourselves, have these thoughts, these negative thoughts that sometimes hold us back and get us stuck. And, um, so you really, through your coaching, help people to get unstuck 
and move forward, right? Because we can miss out on a lot of things in life if we don't allow ourselves to kind of push through. Um, but it sounds simple and yet not always easy, right? Um, what percentage of the, I mean, I know, I don't know if you have, have any data on this, but what percentage of the population do you think is suffering from a, a lack of confidence? I think that at certain level, we all, even people that are very confident, like most of the time, I believe that it's more like what I believe is based on um, cognitive behavioral therapy, you know, that our thoughts again create our reality. So it's backed up with science for right. all the skeptical out there. So I do believe actually that, uh, you know, our thoughts uh, again creates our reality. So the feeling of confidence, and I like what you said about it's very simple, but it's not easy. And this is where we come in, like to help people. I think that what is very simple here is confidence is an emotion that is created by one thought, but we have to cultivate, you know, thinking this kind of thoughts every day. So I believe that it's just people that feel confident. So I will say, I don't know what kind, what percentage of the population, but it's really people that train their brain, like to focus on, like to have thoughts that make them feel confident. Like I can do this. I'm good enough. I'm valuable. What I have to share matters. Like this kind of thought that they believe to be true and every day to redirect your brain and not to believe thoughts such as, Maybe it's not good enough. It has to be perfect. You know, all of this. Um... So to, to answer your question, I would say that we all are insecure in certain like specific situation. Of our I day -to -day agree. Life. I think, I think I gave you a trick question because I... you know what I believe to be true. I just curious what your thoughts might've been on it. I think a hundred percent of the population suffers <laughs> from a lack of confidence at some time or another. Did I pass the test? Yes, you did. No, you did. <laughs> No, I would say, you know, like, I think also just to give to people, like, I'm a confident coach, like, I, I truly believe I can, I'm a step ahead, like, I can help people without being arrogant about it. But what I want to say, what I want to say here is also, I sometimes get insecure because our brain, our brain, you know, I believe always, and I like to say myself this, that our brain's job isn't to make us happy. Our brain's job is to keep us alive. So right. each time that we have these thoughts such as this, this presentation is not going to be good enough, or you are not going to be good enough. It is just our brain that basically thinks that we are at risk of dying, you know, but this is why we feel insecure. It's that simple. Uh, very often people, uh, it's the story they tell themselves about this. So it's like, I'm never going to get there. Something must be wrong with me. People have it figured out. I don't. You know, like this, I think yes. is the big difference when you well, realize that it's okay. Key, what you're touching on um, is, is, and I've talked about this here on, on Mojo before, right? Is that our brain is here to serve us in the sense of, you know, protecting us, keeping us healthy, keeping us alive. Um, yet we, we can control our thoughts, right? Our, our, our thoughts don't have to control us. And so when you look at how much we talk to ourselves all day long, right? If, if our, we can shift our reality, we can change our world very quickly just by changing how we think. And so I, I, like I said, I do think 100% of the population suffers from some lack of confidence at some time or another. It's just that depending on, on the work that you do or the awareness that you have will determine how long you get stuck behind it, right? Yes. So, so because I get asked that question a lot, well, you must have so much confidence. No, I, I don't have all the confidence in the world all the time, but I've learned how to work through that and move past it quickly. Um, and I think that, you know, we have to understand that we don't have to be our thoughts, right? Yeah. We, we are not our thoughts. I and like to say this all the time. We are not our brain. Yeah. We are not our thoughts. And we are not our emotions because people tell yes. themselves exactly, you know, like, I'm an insecure person. But there's no such a thing. You know, it's an emotion. It's like people, I'm an angry person. I'm an impassioned person. This is what we create when we believe this to be true. Just the awareness itself is bringing it back like, ah, okay. This is just a thought. I'm not an impassioned person. I just had the emotion. I just, the emotion of pa impassions just passed through my body. You know, the different, yeah. the semantics matter, actually, I think. Here. Yeah. Yeah. So people, listen, you are not your thoughts. You are not your emotions and you are not your past, right? You can decide right now who you, how you feel, who you want to be in this world, how you show up. And that can change all the time too. I think that, you know, um, we just have to understand, you know, how to move past um, the negative thinking into something that's much more 
inspiring, much more encouraging. You know, I always say, if we examine, really truly examine what we think about ourselves or what we say to ourselves, and then ask, would I talk to you that way? Probably not, right? I would never want to discourage you. I wouldn't want to say some of the things I say to myself. So for someone who's listening to us right now saying, okay, I, I'm tracking with you. I get it. But how do I stop it? How do I, you know, remove those limiting beliefs or rework what I'm thinking? What are some things that you share with clients to help them do just that? Yes. Yeah, so I think that actually very often people want to get from like um, insecurity to super confidence, like feeling that they have their life under control and they have themselves under control and that they actually have a, wait, I'm sorry, but there is an ambulance. So we have to make a small break. I apologize. That's okay. I'm so sorry. I know it happened. <laughs> no, it's good. Okay. So let's start now. Can you reform it? What was the question already? So I can get back to it. I apologize yeah. to Kristen. All right. So we're going to go back to my question and start from there. So I think that um, there's there are people listening to this right now that are tracking with us saying, you know, I get it. I, I, I too, I realize like I do have those thoughts sometimes. And like I said earlier, it's simple to understand. It may not be easy to change. So what are some things that you could share with our audience that might help them to stop, you know, the the negative thoughts or remove some of those limiting beliefs. How would you help someone reframe their thinking? Yes. So I think again, as you said, very simple, not easy, but this is the, the simple, the first step. Very often we are um thinking maybe I'm insecure, like this is what I think about myself, or it's not good enough, or I'm maybe not good enough. And we want to take it kind of black and white thinking, like I have to think like I'm super confident, I'm an amazing person, I'm very good at what I'm doing, you know, the job or anything as a parent, for example. And the way to go is to look at it more in the middle, something more neutral. So the first thing to do is what we mentioned actually before is not to believe our brain when it's offering you the, when it's offering us thoughts such as, again, I mentioned, but they are always, I think they are all the same in the same bucket, you know, I'm maybe not good enough or something's wrong with me. I'm not consistent, so I've never, I'm never going to be consistent in my life. I'm this kind of person. And just this little step of awareness and getting onto a brain and know that, yeah, this is actually just my brain trying to keep me uh, safe. And, you know, I heard that 95% of what we think is like they are the same thoughts of yesterday because the brain say like, yeah, this has been working. The person is still alive. So I'm going to offer yeah, the same loop. thoughts. You kind of, re, you know, stay on the same track of thinking. Yeah. And I think it's without entering the neuro um, science here, but the neural pathways, I think there is something that you need to train your brain thinking or like being uh, more aware of a certain kind of thoughts slowly. So it's a practice. We should not just uh, work against ourselves thinking like, okay, no, I know this is the way to feel confidence. Why am I not there yet? You know, like we have to also give it time to practice. So to answer your question in a few words, I would really just say, don't believe everything you think. And <laughs> it's not that easy again, but it's it's kind of simple. Well, it, you start, it starts with awareness, right? It starts with being aware of what you're thinking, number one, because sometimes we're, we don't even recognize that loop we're in, right? And so as you become more aware um, and, and then you want to reprogram it. I, I often tell my clients, think about, you have to challenge yourself, right? You have to say, where is this coming from? Is it even true? Do I have any evidence of this? Right. Mm -hmm. Because I think we'll come up pretty quickly without having a lot of evidence to support this negative thought. And, and, you know, when we talk about building confidence, um, do you use affirmations? Do you, um, have any that you, have shared with people that you think are helpful or do you in, in help people write their own? How do you feel about affirmations? Yes, I believe that affirmations, uh, we have to believe them to create, that it will create something for us. As I said, I think confidence is a, an emotion that is created by even one single thought. So it is a thought, and I like to ask my clients exactly what you said, to try them on, you know, to try a thought on, like you would try a sweater in a like yeah. a fitting room and check if it feels really confident. And usually what I like to do, because I like all this personal development, but I like to be a bit specific. I believe we all want to be 
more confident in specific situation of our day-to-day life. So for example, clients come often for dating <laughs> to be more confident uh, while dating. So I ask them what specific situation, which for your listeners, it can be any situation they can think of to, that they want to be confident in. And then if they could imagine somebody in the same situation being confident, what do you think this person is feeling? Probably confidence. And what are they thinking? When you say another person, when you help them picture another person, usually it's distance. It gives them a distance from themselves, you know, all the doubts and the voices that they hear about themselves. And yeah, maybe they are thinking, I can date that person. Maybe this can go somewhere just for the example of dating. So I believe for everybody to think about a specific situation we would like to be more confident in and then to ask ourselves, like, what would what would I need to be thinking? And it can be just one or two thoughts, but that generate really this emotion of confidence for ourselves. You really have to try it on. And this is fun to do. My coaching is also about, I, like, I like to make it a fun experience. So we try thoughts on, does this feel confident? Like closing your eyes and checking with yourself if it feels confident. Sometimes it's, I offer, as you said, some clothes to try on if it does feel confident, but everybody has something that will create this uh, without a doubt, because there are situations we do feel confident in, like pouring water. I'm not saying we have to be self-confident into this, but if the water is falling, for example, on the floor, we will not wish turn all of our confidence around pouring water in a glass. That yeah. makes sense? Yeah, it does. Well, and what I think I heard you you share is that you're creating a vision. Right. It's like helping someone almost start a movie in their mind. Right. Like you use the example, okay, someone, you know, they're, they're looking to, you know, find their, their, um, their mate or have this, you know, great relationship. They're out there dating. So what does it look like? Right. Who, who do they want to attract in their life? And what does it even look like to be out with someone and how do they show up with confidence? So it's creating the vision, right? The affirmations and also the manifestation of that becoming part of your, that's what we mean when we say you can create your reality. Because the same way your brain is going down one road saying, you know, that, you know, I'm not enough or I can't do this or I won't have this or all the negative stuff, you can just shift that and create the same pattern of positive thoughts in in what I want, what I'm going to attract. Um, and I, I'll tell you, I am married. Um, my husband and I are together almost 25 years. I, wow. I, I ordered him up from the universe. Like I sat and I thought about who I wanted in my life and what was important to me and what type of person that would be and the qualities and the values and there came that, you know, and so, um, believe it or not, but that is, I believe we have the power to really create this energy around ourselves and attract what we want. Absolutely. So, so in terms of attraction and shift gear slightly, because this is the other component of what you do so beautifully is you're, you're helping people attract fun in their lives too, joy. Yeah. Right. Life is pretty messy and complicated and enough on its own. Right. So we have to find ways to bring in the fun. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, it's all about like, again, the fun. We always think it's only for like the evening on the weekend. But I believe we can bring the fun into our work, into our life. And it's it goes with the idea that uh, my coaching, you know, people often come to me. OK, what am I doing wrong? What should I do? And I like to say that it's not very often. And you'll probably agree with me on this. Not really about what we're doing, but always who we are being, which goes back to what we are thinking. Yes. And people that goes on date and exactly, you know, manifestation, I started to be really into this and to use it a lot in my coaching because the everybody like that is interested in all of this personal development. We think of a version of ourselves that has it all, like a version of a version of ourselves that is the happiest, the most fulfilled. But actually the way to attract this, again, it's not always about what we're doing, which I believe a little bit of inspired action is absolutely necessary, yes. but it's much more about who we're being and we should actually not should, but it's offered to us the option. And I cannot believe that we don't learn this at school, the option to already behave like this version of yourself in the, of ourself in the future. So you mentioned dating, you mentioned looking for somebody and, you know, it's just imagine if you would already behave like you're dating somebody or like looking, you know, in your agenda and looking for things to do with a couple. Like, I mean, this, it's always going back to, <laughs> to go back to the topic of it's not what we're doing. It's really 
the source of it, which is who we are being. And it's always a choice we can make. The only thing limiting us is what we're thinking. Yes. The awareness. Yeah. Yeah, because our thoughts are creating our reality. So if we think our, ourselves into, um, you know, a, a place of, of, as you said, being stuck, right, or, or being held back. And what I love about, you know, this conversation around bringing fun into your life, certainly it could be through recreation, travels, you know, social stuff. But really what we're talking about, you mentioned it at the top of the show, is just learning to to not take ourselves so seriously, right? So it could also just be about a lesson in bouncing back, you know, being able to get comfortable with failure or mistakes, right? Because, and I've talked about this a lot here on Mojo, we learn through those mistakes or failures, right? We get better at whatever we do. And if we, if we take things too seriously, we miss all those learning opportunities. So uh, I think that, you know, for a lot of people who are listening to the show, uh, they're working uh, at a high level, they're operating companies and businesses, they're, they're managing a lot of things in their life between career and family and maybe even community, um, you know, responsibilities. And, you know, life is, is a lot right now compared to what it was for our moms and our grandmothers and great grandmothers. So I think that it's such an important message to say, um, you know, how to really, I, you know, what just came to me as we're, as I'm talking to you, I feel like what you help people do is really just trust themselves and become their own best ally. Right. And to learn how to use yourself more as a resource, because I'm looking behind you, you know, and it says trust your intuition. And it's really about helping people get connected more to who they are and building that confidence and therefore trusting that you can figure it out, trusting that your gut will lead the way. Yes. And it's hard for some people. No, for sure. And I think this is where what we do again matters so much because the confidence from, Truly confidence is really being at peace or um, like having this freedom, this emotional peace and freedom on the inside that no matter what life throws at us, you mentioned before, life is complicated, life is hard, which, you know, by saying this, this is what we create in our life. Like the way we look at things. You're right. Not, you're right. I'm not blaming you. Out. Life no, is also worry. beautiful and it has, you're right. No, I, no, I'm the, I'm the same. You know? See, this is good. This is the, this is the, yes, this is great. No, no, and I did not want to give unsolicited coaching at all. Yeah, I'm just saying yeah. like, it is true that this is the first thing to, that we can pay attention. And it's exactly what you said. I wanted to add that I believe when we bring the fun, you know, and I'm on LinkedIn and I'm the only one, you know, the fun coach, people are very serious. You know, I thought it was like a roller decks and everything. And I think the underlying thought sometimes when it comes to fun or playful, it's it's not going to be serious or it's not going to be effective. And I believe the complete opposite is true because I never been that effective. I think that um, like when I bring the fun and the playfulness that you were mentioning, it's also to use it um, for ourselves on our personal de development journey or in our professional um, like life, like career or business yeah. to take it like from a playful part, like, okay, I wonder how this could work out. Or I wonder how I can talk to my boss, but more from a playful way than this is at stake. Like my reputation, my life, what I'm telling myself, like, you understand? So I think the playfulness is so important. It's not just about having fun and, you know, losing it up and everything. I think it's also the approach is completely different because why not? What's the alternative? I don't think that getting so serious around a problem is like he's going to solve it faster. I think the perspective, like I also believe that our uh, attitude determines our experience all the time. And it's much more in our control than we think it is when we blame the world and other people for the way we're feeling. It's much mm -hmm. more in our control. It comes back to what we're thinking. This is where our power resides. Really, I believe in it. It's such a fascinating conversation because it all comes back to, we see the world through our own perception, right? And and so we can, and and I think, so if you're going to take a few things from, from today's episode, um, your, your thoughts create your reality, right? So your perception is your reality and you can change that perception anytime. Um, and, and you can see something one way and then like a coin, you can flip it around to the other side, like you pointed out so well with me, you know, describing the way life is, 
Well, it, it may be, and it may also be a lot of other things, right? And so we have to understand uh, and appreciate that, you know, our perception does become our reality, but that it can change at any moment. And um, something else that, you know, came to me as you were talking is the fact that, you know, even though as individuals, we have our own perception, we also have our own value system. And that's a really integral part of, of coaching and, and really being an effective coach is coming to understand the other person's value system, right? Because we want to work within their value system. And so that's a big part of this conversation as well, because we put meaning to the things we we hold in, in value, right? And our meaning can look different. So how do you adapt when you're working with different clients and you've got your own beliefs and value systems and they have theirs and yet, you know, you're working to create this message of confidence and, you know, examining your beliefs and, and bringing the joy and, and having, not taking yourself so seriously. How do you work when you, with different people and kind of meet them where they're at? Because I'm sure that you have clients that come in from all different vantage points. Such a good question, honestly. I did not expect it, but I'm ready for it. I think first, for sure, I attract people that are on the same energy level. Or I can see this, you know, in my mm -hmm. consultation or in my coaching session. But it is true that there is a percentage of maybe they were attracted because of this. Maybe they want to find more fun and more yeah, playfulness in their life. So very interesting what you ask. When I'm coaching people, first, my opinion and my values are always irrelevant, you know, like I'm there for the person. So, I mean, of course, right. I always have my thoughts. My brain is still like caring about me and not about the other person. That's right. But I'm never like sharing my opinion. If it's not asked, like I don't, like I wouldn't bring the fun in, um, you know, also we, you mentioned before um, when I pointed at the fact uh, on com a complicated life. So, of course, I'm not pointing like for free to people if uh, I see I'm not into toxic positivity, if they are really like struggling or they just have a lot of emotions. Like it doesn't do any good in the situation. But what I want to say here is, yeah, I'm trying really not to, to answer a question, not to the first session, for example, come with my agenda of my coaching is all about fun, all about playful. So let's turn this situation upside down, make you feel good. I really adapt to the client. Like I really go with my intuition, honestly, to see and ask them very often. I'm going back. Okay. What do you think now is the problem? Like, how can we make this as useful and helpful for you? But to answer your question, it's interesting because, of course, sometimes I really want to bring the fun and the non-seriousness. And sure. yeah, it's a really good question. So I would say I try to meet them and to give them when we talked about before, it makes me think of this. It's again, not even about the question I ask or about the coaching I'm doing. I think it's who I'm being in the moment. If I'm offering, you know, yeah, maybe we can look at it from a playful point of view. The client, exactly what we talked about, I had a client the other day, um, it's no secret because we all have the same conversation on this in my session that, but I want to stop thinking these negative thoughts. Like very often this is happening and we are really like trying to find a solution. And then suddenly we stop by saying like, it's all very serious. Also making decision is the same, like decision making. I have to be good at decision making. It sounds very serious again. So here I can bring, okay, what if we would break all the rules and making decision is just, you look at it like a little experiment like you're a little scientific, a scientist. <laughs> and so, yeah, to answer your question, it's a really, really good question. I will think a little bit more about it, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and you know, I, I had no doubt that you would say what you said, that it's, <laughs> it is really as a coach that we put our, our own beliefs aside. Yeah, I don't know if enough people listening would understand because I think that um, oftentimes what can also keep us stuck is thinking that, you know, we have to change who we are or that, um, you know, what I'm doing is wrong. And that's not what this is about. This is not about saying that the path you're on is wrong, but I think it's about taking a moment to say, is this really working for me? Or could, could yeah. I benefit from a shift in my thinking? Could I benefit from looking at the world through a different window, right? How could my life change if my thoughts change? And knowing yeah. that, you know, as a coach, you can support that, that you, you, you would meet them where they're at. Yes, exactly. I like what you said, because what we said also before about changing our thoughts, and it's not even questioning if it's true or not, exactly what you said, like finding evidence, but it's also, does it serve me to think this? Like, 
after Correct. all. Even is it really? It doesn't matter even if it's true or not. Am I good enough? I, I actually I like also the idea that um, the quality of our life depends on the quality of the questions we ask ourselves. So again, our brain is very efficient. If we ask ourselves, "Am I good enough?" Well, actually, this is a good question. But I mean, like, how am I good enough? You know, just to change. So yeah. yeah. Or, you know, just asking ourselves, you know, what is showing up in my life because of what I'm thinking? Exactly. And not to use it against right? ourselves. Because I agree now, with you. now you're open to looking at the good, the bad, and, the, you know, everything in between, right? Or, or maybe it's not even good or bad. It just is about what's showing up because of what I'm thinking, right? So um, this has been such a great conversation. What's a question that you wish... I'd ask that I haven't asked you yet. I think the last question was a really good question when uh, we consider this. But uh, to answer your question, I would say, um, yeah, what would be the second step? Because you asked me what is what would be the first step uh, when it comes to like, somebody that wants to be confident now, so not to believe. Uh, yeah. What okay. So what comes next? I would say not to use our thought is work against ourselves. I believe that nobody needs to be fixed. Nobody needs to be, you know, like have like a deep problem. We just have thoughts that we believe to be true. And really, I like to say also that uh, as a confidence coach, we can use this work to love ourselves more, to really build this confidence even more with everything we learn, we implement in our life and not to use it again, like as a way to beat ourselves up. Like I should be yeah. further ahead. I'm listening to this podcast. I should have it figured out. We are exactly, we have to be somewhere. So this is where we are, you know. I love that. Yeah. So you are where you are. Embrace that. There is nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. Even if you, through listening to this today, realize, hey, I may have more negative thoughts than I, I'd like. Okay. That's great. Now, you yeah. know, and now you have the opportunity to fix it. You have the opportunity not to, or to change it. You have the opportunity to change it. And um, I love that you shared that because I think a lot of, I think a lot of people hold themselves back from hiring a coach or getting into more personal development because they think it means that they have to admit that something's wrong. And it's, it, it's not true, right? That is another one of those lies we tell ourselves. There's nothing wrong with you. It just might be an opportunity to, to shift, to pivot, to, to take control and make a change that that's exciting. So don't hold yourself back from the development work that you could be, um, the, the work that you could be, sorry, <laughs> don't hold yourself back from investing some time in yourself because you're the best project you could ever work on. That's, that's for sure. So yeah. what are some things that you're working on, uh, Tamara, with clients or do you have any, um, do you work with people mostly one-to-one -one or do you do group uh, coaching and workshops? Tell us a little yes. bit more about that. Thank you. And I have something that I wanted to share with what you just shared now. Um, first Great. I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one now. I think it's um, the way to go as a coach. I like to go one-on-one -on -one to make sure I get it all figured out, like I help really on a like one-on-one -on -one level. And then I'm thinking in the future to take it to group coaching, just because I love being in group coaching containers and learning from people getting coached, you know, because they are in the emotions, I'm watching them. And I yeah. can use this coaching for my life without being in the emotions. I think it's one of the best inventions. And so to answer your question, what is funny and with what you just said is that I'm currently learning um, American Sign Language because I want oh, to be able to nice. coach people that are in situation of uh, deaf or hard of hearing. And it's so funny because what you said before, again, you know, not being broken, I started learning it on my own, thinking, okay, I'm going to get there. I'm going to be proud doing it on my own. And then after a few months, I said, why well, am I not hiring a teacher? Like it's going to, I'm going to get there faster. And That's it's right. exactly what I'm selling people on, you know, like just right. get a coach because you get the guidance and the support that you will just get there much faster. And I was, you know, trying to be a product of my product. And I, this was one of the best uh, opportunities in the universe. Uh -huh. It's great. Right. No? <laughs> so, I always yeah, say we have to drink the water we're selling. <laughs> <laughs> One or, this is why, no, I need to live in integrity with first, this is why uh, when I make mistake or, you know, because of my accent, I'm like, I, I'm selling this, that we don't have to be perfect to be wonderful or memorable, you know? So even if I make mistake and I feel insecure sometimes, so I want to be a product of my product and in integrity, it's what you said with values before it's to live true to yourself and what you believe to be important and true. Yes, that's great. 
So if um, anyone would like to connect with you and learn more about you and your services and uh, how can they find you? Yes. So I have a website that I started a few years ago and it's <laughs> full of funny things. So it's a uh, personal-development-zone.com, like a space for personal development. And yeah, Tamara Fun and Confidence Coach, you can find me uh, a bit everywhere, like on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Many places. Yes, where if, you, people... if you Google Fun and Confidence Coach, you're going to see Tamara all over the place. Tamara Food will be there. It's a so... thing to be a fun coach in 2024. <laughs> yes, it is. And be I whatever think... you want. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a movement. I think that it is. It, it is. It's a movement. It's an opportunity to help people uh, look at themselves in a new light and to let a little bit of the pressure off and mm -hmm. help people to really connect more with their, their, their themselves and trust the, their intuition and build their confidence so that you can achieve anything you want in life. And this is your path, right? This is, what, is, what do they say? Um, anyone who uh, rides motorcycles, they say it's your ride, right? It's nobody else's ride. It's your ride. And uh, that is true for life. It's your ride. So enjoy it and make the best uh, of every day. So Tamara, thanks for joining me. This was so fun. Yes, Thank it, was. You. it was great to have you. And I, I know that you have inspired some people here today. And I appreciate you joining me on Monday Morning Mojo. Thank you so much, Anna. Thank you. And I trust that you got something out of this today that was really insightful and helpful to you. And if you did, please uh, rate and uh, share the podcast with someone, because I think any of us can benefit from having more fun and inspiring messages around us every day. So thanks. And we'll see you next week.